Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Let's welcome in our representative in the Greater Wellington Regional Council, Penny Gaylor, good morning to you. Good morning and Merry Christmas. And to you, and to you. Well, it's been an interesting 2019 for the Greater Wellington Regional Council. We have mentioned transport a, a time or two, and I, I really have to find out whether you received your tin of sardines. Uh, <laughs> I remember eating sardines as a kid on toast with a splash of tomato sauce. Mm, rather and nice. These days, uh, we're talking about sardines, our, our chair... Darren Ponter uh, has been using the analogy to compare what it's going to be like for uh, commuters on our trains if we don't get support from government to buy some new trains for our rail network around the region for our public transport services. So, um, yeah, pretty, you know, a, a good wee analogy for us actually because. <laughs> Uh, you know, we all understand what it's like, what it would be like yes. to be a, a sardine in a can, yes. and we don't want to be. Um, we do not want to be. It has happened no. in the past. I mean, I'm, I, I, as you possibly know, as a regular commuter yeah. for 30 years on the trains, great supporter of them. But it can yeah. get a little bit close and a little bit, you know, um, how am yeah. I going to put it, a little bit um, odorous on occasion. So it's Ooh. really good. Yes, yeah. it is. It yeah. is, uh, particularly yeah. in the summertime, Penny. This, this mm. is a fact of life. Mind you, the new and trains are great, aren't they? Yes, and to give context, so so why the pictures um, around this sort of at the moment and, and his comments around the sardines to uh, various people that we want to influence yes, um, yes. is that we realise that you know the last few years the uh, the use of the patronage on our trains right across the Wellington network has gone gangbusters. Mm. So the what we projected in terms of uh, increasing usage, it's exceeded that everywhere, especially mm. here in the Kapiti yes, Coast. Yes. Good on you. Uh, then also what we have at the same time is uh, the need for us to replace the capital connection, which is very dear to us in the Kapiti Coast. We want to make sure that that service continues for people in Ōtaki and North. And then also for the uh, good commuters of Wairarapa, uh, whose trains are very old, basically, like all of us in New Zealand, get second-hand trains to start with, and um, they are very much near the end of their life as well. So what we have done as a business case at Regional Council, uh, we signed off and we've supported it and, and put it put some, you know, earmarked some money for our, from our Regional Council, is to invest in buying 15 new sets of trains. And so we put our money on the table. And we've made a business case with a very compelling argument and we've put that to two ministers in the hope that it will land favourably for the budget next year. Well, it seems they've got and some money to spend. Is election yet. Yes. yes, and so it, it's all about timing, isn't it? Right. So I'm oh, hoping that the timing is going to work beautifully. Um, and the reality is that, well, the beauty is that these 15 new trains that we want to get for... Um, as they, that would be two for the replacing the capital connection. So not just one service in, in the morning and, and returning in the evening, but two in the morning and right. two returning in the evening. So improving the level of service for our community. Then also, in the middle, through the rest of the day, those trains will very wisely not just be parked up at a train station in Wellington. We will be able to use them throughout our whole Wellington network to um, manage the increase in capacity. So, um, you know, trains trains run, and then also what happens is we have to factor in that actually sometimes trains can't run because they need some maintenance, they mm. need some repair work, mm. uh, we need to do safety checks. You know, so, you know, we might have our stocks, but then we also have to take some out for routine uh, safety checks, we have to take some out for various repairs if something happens or, you know, what sure. we do. So, uh, all this kind of planning going on. The business case where we're pitching for these new trains is very compelling because not only do we have uh, the, the need to replace the capital connection, the need to replace the Wairarapa uh, trains, um, but then we can actually put them all to really good use and based on very good information around this is the, the, the rising kind of patronage and the reality for users in four to five years' time They'll be packed in like sardines, and that's not good enough. Right. Okay. 
hence the tin of sardines going around to the mayors, etc. Now, yes, um, well, to the to the ministers uh, particularly. Uh, yes, to, indeed, yeah, indeed. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Now, these fifteen units, if we're talking about going to Masterton and to Palmerston North, mm-hmm. uh, obviously they're going to run run out of electricity. I think I heard a reference to hybrid units. What exactly yes. has been so requested? The the business case to government actually offers. Uh, a number of options and you know we've kind of been saying oh, this is an option we prefer but here are the various options and the kind of the the, the benefit cost ratio of all these different options and um, but all of them is, is allowing for the reality that for uh, focusing on Kapiti for example you get to Waikanae and then the electrification stops and so that's why the capital connection coming from Palmerston North is entirely diesel what we're proposing is that we have a train that is made that is can run from Palmerston to North to Waikanae. Um, now, there's been talk for a long time, would it be diesel? Uh, we would probably prefer it to be electric battery. Um, yes. We're hopeful that the technologies will have developed in time for us to kind of go that direction. But then whatever that is, that come why can I? You then hook into yeah. that electrification yep. uh, system, mm. and then you run all the way through to Wellington. Sounds also, excellent. Also, that means that 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 having that technology on that train means that that's what they can do for the rest of the day, as I say, when they're doing them, uh, filling in and providing uh, additional capacity for us across our whole not network, just wherever we need it that day. Um, you know, so all that makes really good sense. And the same is for the wire you see. So you're going up the hut. Uh, up hut is where the electrification stops, and then beyond the wire upper, again, you've got your diesel train. So it's a really good solution that rather than just buying two trains for here, us here in Kapiti, we've got the economies of scale. So, it's, uh, again, that's part of a compelling case to government, uh, you know, compelling offer to whoever you might get tender to build, right? You know, per unit, it's, it's, it's a better price if you can say, build us 15 rather than build us one or even two um, and then also you actually can just because otherwise then who do you have to look after these trains for you wouldn't want to have somebody just looking after one train that's not smart um, use of money so here we've got uh, people who are trained up to look after 15 you know you, you just it's just smarter um, decision making for people's money Penny, I listened to the announcement intently. There's one word I did not hear, otaki. Mm-hmm. These hybrid units appear to be custom-made to extend the network to otaki. Has that been seriously considered? Well, that's certainly one of the options that was in there is about that electrification um, right through to otaki. But what I've always explained to people is that so that electrification is really expensive. And that is absolutely what we want to achieve in the long term. But we're not going to get that in, a, in the within the next four years. So we have to kind of go, what is our medium-term solution or our short-term solution that gets us through the medium term before we can actually have that long-term uh, desire um, realised? So what you know, you could spend these huge amounts of money to electrification to Autaki, but guess what? The people in Laverne and Shannon and Palmerston North they'll lose all services. So you've actually got to think about, in terms of public goods, what is the solution that fits for that short to medium term, uh, bridges to the long, longer term, but actually doesn't help so-and-so, but completely um, cut down all the, the public transport options for so-and-so, as I say, live in Shannon, Palmerston North, all through that hot whenua up and through the Manawa too. So, uh, you've got uh, the solution again, here, th- these hybrid yes. units. You just base one of them in Parapa Umu and one of the 15, so there surely must be some capacity there, and just shuttle it between Parapa Umu and Otaki. Done. Simple. Well, <laughs> well, we'll see what the government wants to do in the end because it'll be about the money that they want to put on the table. But again, you've kind of got to think about, well, what's the big amount of money that we're spending and how we spread that right across all the problems we've got. Um, and I say, you know, we've got, we've got to look after the wire wrapper as well. Would you advocate for a solution, which I realised what I proposed was 
possibly simplistic, but it, it, it seems feasible. Would you advocate for that kind of extension well, of the yeah. metropolitan, uh, uh, the, the service that MetLink provides so well to most of the region, but not Otaki, to fill that gap? Oh, well, of course, of course, I'm going to want the, the optimum option for Otaki because it's part of the Kapiti Coast and we shouldn't be excluded from any of the ideal solutions for us. But I've got to be pragmatic and say this is the, the, the options that we're kind of putting through at the moment. Uh, having worked through the business case, um, you know, all, all the kind of the work that's gone on behind the scenes for some months now and done the numbers on that, we actually have to work out when we're going to spend an awful lot of money, like $400 million type money, um, we actually have to go, what is the solution that actually is kind of meets all the needs of as many people and parts of our, our region as possible? So what is the solution for Otaki then? So that is what I'm saying is if we buy these trains, two new ones that would then provide um, services from Palmerston North, stopping at Otaki and into Wellington. And then also what that means is that train could potentially do that stuff anyway because it can get to Otaki. So you could do trains in, in through the day mm. uh, because it, it can go back and forth to Otaki. So it, it actually is that option is there. Great. Excellent. And, and you know, if you're doing special events, you know, it means you have these trains that can get up to the kite festival in Otaki if, if we, you know, can factor it in and somebody has to kind of pay for those things. But, um, you know, to run that service on those days uh, when required. But um, what we've proposed actually is the best fit to actually deal with all of these examples. Uh, Penny, I see that people have a chance to have their say. Uh, the Wellington Regional Land Transport Plan, which I assume covers what we've been talking about, consultation finishes on the 23rd of December. So people can get in, they can provide their feedback on what they think should happen. And uh, but I just, um, absolutely, but I think not to confuse what's actually going on in terms of we have a business case, which is separate from any kind of consultation plan for the, the Wellington region um, transport strategy, uh, we have a specific business case in from regional council, which is on the back of the, the investment that we identified in our long-term plan last year, and this is um, a, a body of work that is, is doing the ask to government to say we uh, have done all the work, we've yes. progressed yes. all the thinking here, because otherwise, you know, we want to get on with the stuff. Sure do. Sure <laughs> I, do. I've, I've, when we say consultation <laughs> about, we, we're not wanting to have consultation about, oh, let's get a solution for the train services to Ortaki. I've, I've been in, I've been a representative in one way or the other for Ortaki and the wider Kapiti Coast for 12 years now. Believe me, I've, I've heard all the suggestions and all the issues. This is the time when actually we've got regional council finally supporting a solution. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so let, please don't get distracted by um, that there's some consultation on a on a wider, bigger strategy. Uh, we actually have the business case done, and it's on the minister's, in plural, table. Penny, I thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah. I realise yet again I've dragged you out of a meeting. So, oh, yes, uh, you better go we, back in and take some <laughs> more, you know. We appreciate <laughs> it, and uh, a very Merry Christmas to you and yours. Thank you very much. There we are, Penny Gaylord. 106.3 BGFM.